food bloggers. Hi, how are you today? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. This is the place for food bloggers to get information and inspiration to accelerate your blog's growth and ultimately help you to achieve your freedom, whether that's financial, personal, or professional. I'm Megan Porta, and I've been a food blogger for over 12 years. I understand how isolating food blogging can be at times. I'm on a mission to motivate, inspire, and most importantly, let each and every food blogger, including you, know that you are heard and supported. No matter where you're at in your blogging journey, at times, I know that you feel discouragement. I've been a food blogger for 13 years now, I think it's 13 years, and I can look back and see so many times throughout my own journey where I have been discouraged by many different things. Michelle Mori from Barefoot in the Pines brings this issue to the table today, and she also gives us tips about how to avoid discouragement when it comes our way. She talks through a few key points, such as finding a keyword research tool that takes the load off when it comes to SEO, connecting with fellow food bloggers and how important that is to alleviate discouragement, not comparing ourselves, planning, scheduling things out, and so much more. This is a great episode. Michelle was super easy to chat with. I think you're going to love it. This is episode number 448, sponsored by Rank IQ. Hey, food bloggers, are you ready to receive specialized learning about how to use GSC, GA4, and Pinterest analytics, and to have a solid strategy for Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok? Also, to gain knowledge about post structure, blog design, email strategies, digital products, and sales pages, let's not forget about making lifelong friendships and connections leading to collaborations and partnerships, as well as attaining SEO knowledge, accelerated blog growth, revenue and traffic growth, increased confidence, clarity, focus, and so much more. As you know, there is no college degree in food blogging. The eBlog Talk Mastermind will provide you with all the things I mentioned and more. Get answers to your questions within hours and sometimes minutes instead of making mistakes for years and having to do massive cleanup retroactively. Get on the wait list for the 2024 eBlog Talk Mastermind now to take advantage of the offers before we lean into the new pricing. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind to find the link. Here's what a few past and current members are saying. Brittany and Terrence, food bloggers at Plant Power Couple said, if you feel isolated and struggle with believing in yourself, joining the group is the biggest thing that can change your mindset. Barbara, food blogger at Butter and Baggage says, since joining the eblog talk mastermind, I've developed confidence in myself and what I can accomplish. It is the best investment I could have made. And Carrie, food blogger at Talking Meals, said, The price tag is minimal compared to what you get back from the group. The motivation and support are invaluable. Head to eblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind. Join the waitlist while the offers are hot. We invite you to be part of the magic with us. A born and raised Mainer, Michelle is a stay-at-home mom that started blogging right before the pandemic. She's been working with food since graduating from high school in 2004 and has successfully turned her love of food into a passionate business. A fun fact, Michelle and her husband met at the bakery they both worked at and became fast friends, eventually getting married. Today, they have one daughter, one dog, and one cat. They share a love of all baked goods and love to entertain and explore beautiful Maine outdoors. Michelle, so good to have you on the podcast. How are you today? I'm great, Megan. How are you? I am doing well. I'm super excited to start my day with you. I'm excited to talk about this topic. I think this is really important and relevant right now, just as a food blogger myself, who feels discouragement. And this year has been particularly (laughs) discouraging at times. So this will be a really great conversation. But before we get into that, do you have a fun fact to share with us? Uh, Yes. So after college, I went to culinary school. And then right after that, I ended up getting a job at a bakery. And so I worked there for a week. And then I ended up staging for a pastry chef position too at a small Italian restaurant. So it was kind of like pinning them against each other because I knew I wanted to be in the food space and, you know, work in a restaurant or a bakery or something like that. So I ended up turning down the pastry chef position just because I was like, like early 20s. I need I like out on my own. I needed like insurance and benefits and stuff. And the bakery had that. So 
the fun fact part of it is if I hadn't turned down that pastry chef position, I would not have met my husband because he ended up working at the bakery that I ended up staying at. So like if I hadn't turned down that pastry chef position, I wouldn't have my husband. I wouldn't have, you know, this beautiful house in Maine and my dog and my cat and my daughter. And it was just like, it blew my mind how just one small it like meaningless decision. It seemed like at the time, like changed everything. Mm, changed so. your whole life. And have you? Okay, first of all, have you seen Sliding Doors? That movie. It's like an maybe a nineties movie. <gasps> no, okay. I haven't. So it's Gwyneth Paltrow, and it's the same concept where she misses a train or a subway that she's going to take, and it shows you the parallel lives. So if she made the subway, and if she didn't make the subway, and how. Like one track led to this life and one track. And it was all just like one door. Like that's it. Just one slide of a door. So that reminded me of that. But oh my gosh, isn't that crazy? Like there are certain things in my life too where I'm like, if that one little tiny thing wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be here. And it's... It's like very deep, right? (laughs) Looking back and... Yeah, I know. Very woo-woo. It's like... Yeah, it is. crazy to think about, but it's like, oh my God, I can't even imagine what my life would be like like if I had just stayed there hitting a chair. (laughs) Especially for people who really love their lives. You're like, oh, thank God. Thank God I didn't choose that other job, you know? Well, we're starting on a deep note. I love it. Monday morning, (laughs) deep, or actually Tuesday morning, deep thoughts. So thanks, Michelle. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to talk today about just getting discouraged and ways to avoid getting discouraged while blogging because inevitably this will find us no matter what. Like if you're in it for the long haul, you will at times get discouraged. But first, I would love to hear just a little bit about your blog. Can you give us a little background on it? Sure. So the blog is called Barefoot in the Pines and it's just a food blog. Originally when I started it, I started in back February of 2020 and I was a stay-at-home mom just kind of looking for a hobby and maybe some way to like earn a little extra income on the side. So I had started that blog and it had intended on being like, or I had intended it to be like a DIY and home blog and food, but it just evolved into a food blog. And it's just a nod to, you know, living in Maine and I'm always just barefoot around my house and stuff like that. So the, so Maine's called the pine tree state. So that's why in the pines is a, you know, a tip of the hat to the pine tree state and yeah, just embracing like Maine cooking and just, like, you know, just kind of the lifestyle in New England. And we have beautiful seasons and just very seasonal recipes and stuff. So it's just basically just a way to embrace that and kind of take traditional family. It's very family focused too, like lots of dinners and things for kids, but like with a New England kind of spin okay. and twist. That's right. You're a main. Okay, is it a mainer? What do you call it? Yep, it's mainer. Yeah, I don't think I've ever said that word in my life. You're a mainer. <laughs> I think I've talked to you about this before because I've never been to Maine. It's one of the few states I've never been to, and I want to go so bad. So mm-hmm. when that happens, I will let you know because I would love tips and anything you have yeah. to share about oh visiting. God, yeah. Yes. Okay. So your blog is relatively new, and I'm curious about. At what point did you realize like, oh my gosh, this is a like a very overwhelming job with a lot that goes into it, whether it's a hobby or not, like I call it a job. But yeah, at what point did you realize that? I think when I first started, just when I took my first blogging course, like I took a course like right at the very beginning. I don't even remember how I found it or how I got the idea, but I stumbled across it and I was like, wow, this sounds nice because I thought it would just be as simple as, you know, you write a recipe and then you just post it on the internet and take some pictures and everybody will find it. Mm -hmm. But when I dug into the course and saw how many chapters and like how many hours I was spending, I was like, oh my gosh, like there was so much involved. And then after I got through that and I got my blog all set up, it really started getting, I would even say overwhelming when the word SEO kept coming Mm. up. 
because the blogging course was just pretty much how to set up a blog, but it didn't touch on SEO. So I kept hearing about it and stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't need that. And I was just kind of (laughs) diving into Pinterest. And then when I finally understood what SEO was, and like how important it was, like, then that's when it got so like, oh my gosh, like this is a lot of work, like a lot of research, like this is like a legitimate job. Mm. Like it's not just, you can't just throw a recipe up there. You can't write about whatever you want. So I think it was when I finally understood what like SEO was and when yeah. Pinterest like crashed back in 2020 yeah. and I lost all of my traffic. Yes. You're not alone. We've all, I feel like we've all been there. So yeah. we get it. And that word just SEO is kind of overwhelming in itself because it's like, what the heck is that? Especially when you're just coming in and you know, taking pretty pictures, like you said, and making food and, oh, this will be fun, all creative. And you're like, I don't want anything to do with that word SEO because it's just, I don't know what it means. And we avoid it. And speaking for probably the masses, there's a period of time in our journeys when a lot of us avoid that. And we're like, oh, we don't need that. (laughs) But we find out quickly that we actually really do need it. So how did you navigate that, just the SEO portion? What made it easier, less overwhelming, and less discouraging? So I joined a lot of like Facebook groups and blogging communities and kind of just got immersed in like, just like the lingo of it and people talking about it. So it felt like, I don't know, it felt more organic and not like a brand new like concept because it was a brand new concept at the time, like when I really started digging into it. So like I just I took a lot of time to just figure out what SEO was, like what it was before I actually started like diving into like really getting my hooks in it. So after I figured out what it was and how important it was, I ended up just taking a course on SEO And it was just a very analytical and logical approach because my blog had been just very creative and like making what I wanted and just making it beautiful. So I switched gears to take a more like numbers and, you know, statistics and analytic like approach to it. And when I started stripping away like all the emotional stuff and like the the feelings about the the what I was gonna the content that I was creating and started just looking at statistics and analytics, it almost felt like freeing because mm-hmm. I was like, oh well, these are the numbers. Like these are like these are the facts. Like I could look at a set of facts and know what does well and how to do that well and stuff like that. So that helped me take a lot of the guesswork and stuff out. So yeah, like we were talking about earlier, SEO is daunting when you first hear it and you think you don't need it. And then you soon realize when you start digging in that it's really not as bad as you were thinking. And knowledge is power if you just know what it is and know why it's important and that you know, it gets you traffic. If you know a little bit about it, just a little bit about it can get you really far. So I love that you took a course you knew to go immerse yourself in groups and learn and see what you needed to do. Now, do you use, I think you're a Rank IQ user, correct? Yes. Yep. I actually recently started using that and I just love it. And like, I use it for a couple of different things. Like I definitely optimize my content. So all those old blogs that I made, like when I was just making whatever I wanted, I run those through Rank IQ. And it's great because I can find like, like, I don't have to trash those posts. Like I can just find a new keyword to kind of like reconfigure it around. And like Rank IQ helps me like, you know, you know, bring it up to, to Google speed. So like all this, time that I spent on these older posts, they weren't great back then, but I'm able to transform them into usable content now. And a lot, I love Rank IQ mostly for when I'm coming out of like a summer slump, or if I just, I don't know, like just feel like the about blogging, like Mm -hmm. I'm just not into it, or I just can't get creative. I love their keyword library Mm. because I just get so inspired. So like, I will just take like, what do I feel like making? So it's kind of like you get that, you know, creativity back. Like, what am I in the mood to make? And you go into the Rank IQ library, type in like cheesecake, for instance, is my absolute favorite thing to bake. (laughs) Yum. 
<laughs> so whenever I'm in the mood for a cheesecake, I'll go into rank IQ and be like, I'm feeling cheesecakey today. I put it in and it gives me a list of like cheesecakes I can rank for and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't have to think about it. I know there's like something I want to make and that would bring me joy to make. And like, here are a bunch of keywords and how to get it ranking and stuff like that. So it's great when you just don't want to think and just don't want to, you know, really put a lot of like emotion and stuff into it. Like you can still like fill your cup creatively and like have a a win automatically. So Mm -hmm. I love Rank IQ for that. I totally agree with all everything that you just said. It's like you are handed word keywords perfect for you on a silver platter. And there's no other keyword research tool like that. And I think uh, people are a little daunted by the price tag. It's not like super expensive, but it's more expensive than key search, for example. But mm-hmm. once people get into it, they're like, oh my gosh, why have I been putting this off? It is such a good tool for exactly what you're saying, Michelle, just that creative the creative ideas and, you know, cheesecake. All you have to put in is cheesecake and it gives you this huge list of ideas and you're like, I I never would have thought of that. So yeah, I'm glad that that kind of inspired you. I was I was just telling someone the other day that if it weren't for Rank IQ, I probably would have thrown my old blog like into another solar system by now because yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just was out of ideas. Like, what do I do with this thing? I have no idea what to do with it. I thought all my old content was just gone, that I, mm-hmm. there's no way I could have saved any of it. And Rank IQ just gave it all new life. And mm-hmm. my traffic has, I mean, minus that like Pinterest magic that I experienced years and years ago, yeah. I have more traffic than I've ever had. I mean, it's it's such a great tool. So I'm so glad you found, found magic there too. <laughs> Yes. And it gets me excited too. So like going back, like when I'm feeling discouraged or in like a slump and I do want to just make something like looking at like, again, going back to the cheesecake example, like if I'm in the mood to make a cheesecake and then like there's all these cheesecakes that Rank IQ has listed as something that I could actually rank for, I get excited and it's like my wheels start turning and it's like, oh, I never thought of that before. Like that sounds amazing. So it's like, I don't know, it just re like just reignites like a little fire or spark. So yeah. I I love it. It's like a coworker versus a tool to me. Oh, <laughs> like, I like that. And it's something yeah. you don't expect from a keyword research tool. You don't expect to go in and get inspired, you know, mm-hmm. like get, getting the creative juices flowing. That's not expected. So I think when people find that, they get really surprised. Like, oh, thank you, Rank IQ. You're a pal. You're a buddy, my coworker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you have specific encouragement for maybe newer or older bloggers who are avoiding SEO? Do you just have any words like just do it or whatever? Yeah. So like over the years, I found if you just take like a step back or just zoom out, and I mean that kind of like literally and figuratively, because sometimes like for me, my slow season is in the, the summer. And I remember as a new blogger and even like, like maybe a year ago or something, I would just get so bummed out, like after the holiday rush and after that really good holiday and fall traffic and stuff, and you start to see the numbers decline, I would just get like, really like, Mm -hmm. like, oh, this is so discouraging. Like, where are my numbers going? And I would kind of like panic pin and like try to get things, you know, stuff like that. But what I found, you know, as time went on, like, if you just zoom out, so like, like, get out of the current moment, like, yeah, it's not great right now. But just think the bigger picture, like think overall, like, how was it a couple months ago? How was it, you know, last year, depending on how long you've been blogging, like, just remember back, like, what blogging looked like at a good time, you know, and then like, especially when you're a new blogger, you're checking your analytics, like every day, like, where's my traffic? Who's on right now? And like, when you're checking every day, you'll see like some days it's green and some days it has the red and it could be mm-hmm. like a 0.6%, but it's still like, when you see the red, you're like super bummed out. So my advice is just back it up. Like, look at the year, like, do 12 months, two years, however far to let you go back. And just look at the pattern of like your analytics. So if you notice that like 
this year's, you know, traffic is following the same pattern as last year's, then you're doing okay. And that, that just brought me relief to know like, okay, like, cause I get in this like doom, like in the moment, like, oh my gosh, my traffic is down. I'm freaking out. But it's like, okay, let's just take a step back. What did it look like last year? And if it's doing the same thing it did last year, like you're fine. Like there's just some things that are out of your control. So yeah. Mm. So my advice is like, keep going. And then if you have enough data, just, just get a bigger picture. Don't be so in the day to day in the moment because like, you know, it's just a drop. It's a drop in the bucket. Like just get the bigger picture. Cause that really helped me. That is such great advice. It's really hard to do though, just to give that a nod. Like it's so easy to say like, just step back. But I have been there so many times when you're looking at the analytics and you're so overwhelmed by the red and you yeah. just, it's almost like it's a magnet. Like you can't look away. This is negative. This is bad. This is all, mm-hmm. you know, you just start going down this rabbit hole of terrible thinking. So mm-hmm. it's really hard to do that. But mm-hmm. if you can do it, it's so helpful. Yes. Like, okay, there's a pattern here. You're okay. And that's where this is a good segue to just having a you know, like a peer group, people surrounding you who are positive and encouraging who are going to remind you of that. Because sometimes we do need those outside reminders because we can't always do this on our own. So what do you think about that, Michelle? Just having, you know, people, food bloggers to connect with who will help you with these sorts of things? 1000%. Like I had, I met um, a fellow blogger and she was like a little bit ahead of me. So I do recommend like a blogger that has like a year or two on you, like that has seen some things in the blogging yeah. community. But yeah, no, I was very lucky because when I was going through, you know, these dips, like my dips for the very first time or like my first year and losing traffic and stuff, it was so helpful to have somebody that has been through it. And like, I could like bounce ideas off of her and be like, oh my gosh, my traffic is down. Or like, I don't know about this keyword. It was supposed to do well, but it's not doing anything. It's just so nice to have like buddies that can just like talk you off the ledge and just like calm you down and just be like a reassuring voice. And I do love because this podcast too can serve as that voice, like especially Mm -hmm. if you're a new blogger. So like if you're just starting out and haven't built that blogging community, it's just nice to have like a podcast like this so you can listen to it. So you have like connections and like expert advice. So if you don't have a community of bloggers of your own yet, you have this resource at least to kind of help you with that until you make like a bunch of blogging friends and stuff. So I think it's a hundred percent, like million percent important to have like somebody to turn to that has been through it that can like help you and kind of hold your hand and just (laughs) give you a hug when you need it. Oh my gosh, that's so important. Food bloggers, are you wanting to tap into additional revenue and improve your site experience for users? Chicory might be a great solution for you. Chicory is a leading monetization platform for food bloggers, enabling you to integrate highly relevant, shoppable ads into your recipe content and earn revenue from top CPG brands. Chicory's hyper-contextual ads and shoppable technology will help you improve your site experience and engagement, allowing your readers to go from inspiration to checkout in just a few clicks. Enjoy easy installation and ongoing access to the Chicory team at zero cost to you. Chicory makes it easy to track your earnings, optimize your blog content using recipe insights, and connect with its team. Plus, with integrations with leading ad networks such as Mediavine and 60-plus retailers, Chicory makes it so simple to get started earning revenue today. Head to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources and click the Chicory link to get started. Scroll down to the Chicory logo, click the button that says learn more about Chicory, or you can go to chicory.co slash food bloggers to learn more and sign up. That's chicory.co slash food bloggers. Like Michelle said, I will be your gap. I will be your friend <laughs> until you find that group. And I will do my best to help you find that group because without it, 
I think all of us probably would have thrown in the towel. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. You just need it. Like if you want to succeed and you want to make this a thriving business, you need those connections with food bloggers. And there's yeah. a lot of ways to find them. So yeah, so agree with that. And just like the information and the support and friendships. I've made lifelong friendships from food bloggers and yes. it's so vital. What else do you have, Michelle, as far as ways to avoid discouragement? I like to just take breaks when necessary. Like I feel like at least when I was first starting out, I used to feel guilty about like taking a break because I was like, I just have to get that new content out. I've got to, you know, keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, you know, when you're discouraged, I find that sometimes it's not necessarily helpful. It's kind of adding fuel to the fire, like, and then you eventually burn out. So I think it's important to kind of remember why you started blogging, you know, whether it was to be your own boss or a creative outlet and stuff like that, and just kind of like foster that and just remember and nurture that. So take breaks if you need to and find pockets like when you're feeling discouraged to like kind of fill your cup. So like if testing recipes is what, you know, makes you feel best, like that's mine. Like my cup filler is like when I'm kind of just feeling discouraged and blah, I just love cooking. I just get back in the kitchen and whether it becomes anything, you know, but just do something like that you love about the job And just kind of focus on that for a little while until things just kind of balance out. And then you can, you know, slowly get back your mojo and like just kind of ignite that fire again. So yeah, just feed yourself. Just feed yourself. (laughs) Yeah, that's such great advice. I love that. And when we were talking about the analytics and how that can be like a magnet pulling you in, I feel like this is the same thing. Sometimes I resist breaks because I just want to get the work done. And it's like... I hear this from so many food bloggers. Once you get started, it's so hard. It's like you're in this vortex that you can't get out of and you you don't want to take breaks. So sometimes you have to force yourself to take breaks, right? Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Like, honest, if I'm going to be super honest, like, I think it wasn't until last year where I was like, okay, I'm going to take like a legitimate vacation. Like I just need to just stop, just like take a break. Like nothing's going to implode. Like it'll be fine, you know? And that's, it's actually really hard when you're a brand new blogger because you have this push to just keep pushing out content. And I feel like you still have a bit more fire because like you have more stuff fueling. And when you start getting those first things of like, you know, just drives of traffic, you know, you get really excited about it. But as you get more seasoned, you do start to feel exhausted (laughs) and discouraged. And like that, I think is just good to just take a step back and just kind of recharge, rest, and just kind of let, yeah, just kind of let your juices just come back. Yeah, it's very necessary. And breaks daily, but also breaks, like you're saying, a vacation, like a legit vacation or even like I've started doing in recent years, like kind of a summer off. I mean, I don't, really take the whole time off, but I don't work that much. I do these interviews. I do kind of basic necessities with the blog, but, you know, things are moving. So I I don't know. I do take a lot of time off. So that too. So think like micro, like daily, like get out for a a walk, get outside if you can, but also on the broader scale, like Michelle saying, take a vacation. You deserve it. Yes. I mean, we wanted to be our own bosses. So it's yeah. like, there's no point being your own boss if you can't take any time off. Oh, so. right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's such a great point. And plan it. Like you have to write it in, like you have to plan it, like, like plan your content because then you don't have to think about it. Like brain dump, plant, schedule in time. Like that's what I ended up doing. Like I will set my alarm and say, no, at 12 o'clock, you're going to have like at least a 30 minute lunch, no work, like go do, you know, and then plan your vacation, plan yeah. your content, plan writing to, you know. Isn't that funny how we talk to ourselves? I do the same thing, Michelle. I'll be like, Megan, you are, there is leftover salmon in the fridge. You are going to go eat that at noon. And like, I'm my parent, my own parent being, you know, (laughs) giving orders. It's so funny, but we do have to be like that sometimes. Otherwise we just let it slide. And then before we know it, it's six o'clock and we haven't moved from our chair and it's ridiculous. 
Yes. <laughs> and then also with that, like accountability too. Sometimes I'll just tell my husband things that I want to do. If he's here at the house, I'll just say, please, will you come get me at such and such time? Or I'll say that to my boys at their home and they will do it. And that helps me a ton because I don't want to leave my desk sometimes, but when they're sitting there tell me, telling me I have to, then I will. Okay, what else? Any other ways to avoid discouragement? So I touched upon it just a second ago, but yeah, planning has been huge for me. Now, in when I first started, I wasn't a huge planner. Like I would be like, I would just make a recipe, write it up, throw it out there. But now, like I've really embraced like writing down and creating content calendars and like just planning my photography days, planning my writing days, planning like days that I have to take off because I have a daughter that's going to be going into kindergarten and she's got different appointments and this, that and the other thing. And I'm still like a stay at home mom, like my husband works full time in an office. So I'm still like primary point of contact when it comes to kids stuff. Yeah. So I've got to have a like my day has to be planned, you know, all the time to fit in work to fit in life, all of that. So and so I'm super guilty of this. I really just started planning like this past year, like 2023 has been just a complete overhaul just for Mm. efficiency for me. And it's been working so well. So like I'll plan out my content, like for the next three months, I'll take one day and just bang out like recipe testing and just pick which is like best. And I mean, it it looks different for everybody, however you want to plan. But I find it just works out that when I just plan a strict cooking day, a strict writing day, an email day, all that, like it just makes me so less overwhelmed and burnt out and like discouraged and overworked. Like it just, it just eases me so much. And like I can fit everything I want in a day if I just plan it out. So Mm -hmm. I love that. And you don't necessarily have to plan three months in advance, even planning one day in advance. I found at times when I'm, you know, kind of flying by the seat of my pants, a lot's going on right now. I have family in town. They've been here for a long time. (laughs) So I feel like just (laughs) getting one day planned goes a long way. So you don't need to sit down and plan out your entire year necessarily, but start with a day and see how that goes. 100%. Yeah, I'm definitely like one of those all or nothing kind of people. So like, I'm definitely a little extreme. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, that's great. You're inspiring goals for all of us, Michelle. (laughs) Yeah, like a little tiny bit of intentionality can go such a long way. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Awesome. Okay, anything else? Discouragement? What else can we do to avoid it? I would say to don't like comparison is such a huge issue with bloggers, I feel, and like the imposter syndrome and stuff like that. And I found myself, especially in the beginning, like comparing my photos and my recipes to like other bloggers. And it could kind of get me feeling down a little bit like, oh, I'm not like, so and so and her beautiful photographs, or like, I make my you know, casserole this way, but that's not how everybody else is doing it. Like what's wrong with mine? Like, so I've kind of like challenged my comparison thoughts and tried to like shift the mindset a bit to, you know, be inspired versus and like embrace my uniqueness versus like comparing how I'm falling short compared to another blogger, if that makes sense. Mm. Because I again, like we are on social media and even Pinterest and stuff like that. Like you see people's beautiful photography. That's my like personal struggle is photography. Like I'll see these beautiful photos and I'll just be like, oh, mine don't look (laughs) as crisp and stuff like that. But it's hard because like comparison is tough. And I feel like we try to be like the bloggers we follow on social media and they might have inspired us to start blogging ourselves. But I think it's important to remember, too, the people that we're comparing ourselves against, they're like years ahead of us. So like where we are today, they were at like two, three years ago. So like they've probably been through the same things that you're feeling right now. They're just through it. And, you know, over time, they've honed their craft and have gotten better. So I think it's just important to remember that you don't have to be perfect right out of the gate progress over perfection, you know, and just 
there's so many food bloggers out there now that you kind of want to use the tools you have like rank IQ and Google and key search and stuff like that to create your unique recipe, but use the tools, you know, to, to still get you onto Google, use it as a, like a support for your uniqueness. So like, if you make a, a recipe a certain way, and you're kind of like, Oh, like, everybody else isn't making it the same way. Like you can still use the tools to get your stuff onto Google, but you can still like hold on to that uniqueness. Like, you know, don't, don't be discouraged by being different. Just embrace it and know that you can like compete with other bloggers for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, yeah, totally. Yeah. Just kind of shift comparison into inspiration. Yes, I love that. Yeah, just don't feel like you're falling short. Just be like, oh, well, then I'm just approaching this in a unique way. And if you know you're not happy with like your photos or your recipe format or something today, just know it's going to get there. You just yeah. have to give yourself grace and time. So inspiration over comparison. I think that is uh, Michelle's line of the episode. <laughs> I love that. That's so good. And just like making that shift in your mind when you do start to compare, just reminding yourself inspiration, inspiration, so that you don't fall into that because it can be so easy, especially when you're just starting. And I hope this is encouraging what I'm about to say, but if you're in the food blogging game long enough, you'll get to a point where you kind of don't care anymore. <laughs> like my photos, I I used to be so like what you were saying, Michelle, where it was like, oh my gosh, why can't mine be as crisp and pretty and colorful as everyone else's? And now I kind of just don't care. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, I want them to look good, but that's where my standards stop. That's, I don't need the highly styled. And I think that's, I think that's encouraging because then I have room for other things and I have energy for other things and I'm okay with it. You know, like if I were, if I were comparing myself to others, then that would take up energy, but I'm just, I'm like, I'm good. (laughs) I'm good where I'm at. It's freeing. It's like such a freedom to just know, like just strip away all the superficial stuff at the end of the day and just remember why, you know, you started blogging and then just remember like someone's reading this, like you're trying to help someone create something to bring them joy. So, you know, if you're not feeling great, like you wouldn't want your reader to like look at, you know, to have somebody that wasn't feeling it, like give them a recipe. Yeah, like I, right. I don't want a recipe from a grump, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just you yeah. want to give your readers quality and the best part of you. And so you don't want to go in with just like, Oh, who cares? No one's going to read this. Like you don't want that attitude, you know? Yeah. So you have to fill yourself up like, and get yourself like excited for it because then your readers are going to be excited for it and they deserve that quality. Yes. You know, they do. They do. And yeah, your heart needs to be in it. And if you're comparing yourself and your work to others, your heart truly isn't in it. You're not focusing on your stuff. You're focusing on other people's stuff. So great. This is so helpful. Is there anything else you feel like we should touch on before we start saying goodbye? I think just one last thing that I want to add, I just thought of this. It was important to me to actually sit down and remember our blogs are living like entities. So whatever you do today, like you can fix it later. So like if you have photos that are kind of yucky from beginning, like, oh my gosh, the, the early Barefoot in the Pines blog posts are just, they're comical at this point. <laughs> I was so excited about them when I put them out, but like now it's just cringy. So with that being said, like you can always fix them. Like you can always boost your content. You can always like accept feedback from your readers and fix a recipe. You can always change the photos. So don't freak out. Like just get the content out there when your heart is full. And like, you know, if it, if you need to fix it down the road, you can, it's like, this isn't a permanent, you know, Mm. thing. You can always be fixed. It can always be updated and upgraded. And Google loves an updated post. So yes opportunity. Yeah. Right. Nothing is etched in stone. We are definitely writing in a soft pencil that can be erased and rewritten later. 
that's relieving. That's freedom right there. Just like, yeah, if you've pushed publish, you can go back as many times as you want. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for all of this. This is so inspiring. And I think no matter where we're at in our journey, whether someone's even thinking about getting into blogging or whether they've been doing it for 10 years or more, this is going to be a great episode just to encourage people to keep going and to avoid discouragement. And you've given us a lot of ways that we can do that. And I think if we all follow Michelle's advice with all of these things, it'll be so much easier. It just takes so much pressure off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for being here, Michelle. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for having me. It was so fun. (laughs) Yes, I loved our chat. Do you have a favorite quote or words of inspiration to leave us with? Yes, I saw this on, I can't remember if it was like TikTok or Instagram, but I saw this really cool quote that said, comparison destroys personality. And that just sat with me because it's like, it's so true. Like when we start comparing ourselves to others, we start to lose a little bit of our individuality, just trying to, you know, follow the herd and be like everybody else. So I love kind of keeping that in the back of my head just so I can hang on to like my creative, you know, spark and my individuality and stuff like that. So I don't know, really resonated with me. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love it. We'll put together a show notes page for you and you can go to eblogtalk.com forward slash barefoot in the pines. If you want to go look at those, Michelle, tell everyone where they can find you online. You can find me at barefootinthepines.com. That's the site. And on Instagram, it's at barefoot in the pines. And on Facebook, it's at Barefoot in the Pines as well. Awesome. Everyone go check Michelle out and all of her handles and her blog. And thank you again, Michelle, so much for being here. And thank you for listening, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. Don't forget to head to forum.eatblogtalk.com to join our free discussion forum and connect with and learn from like-minded peers. I will see you next time.